Stone Temple Pilots would go on to become one of the biggest bands in the 90s, despite the fact that critics never gave them their due. The band would rise to superstardom with their debut album 1992's Core, which spawned several huge singles with Plush, Sex Type Thing, and Creep. They followed that up with the release of 1994's Purple, which produced another three huge singles in Interstate Love Song, Big Empty, and Vaseline. In addition to the track Unglued, which was never released as an official single, but charted anyways. With all the success also came problems. By the mid-90s, frontman Scott Weiland's drug addiction threatened the existence of the band, and soon enough the public became aware of his substance abuse issues as he was arrested in 1995 following a drug bust. Lucky for him, he avoided jail time after agreeing to enter rehab, telling Rolling Stone, I'm in the process of getting sober, I want to be happy again, and I'm going to do something about it before it kills me or F's up everything in my life. It came out years later that the band almost fired Wyland in 1994 and replaced him with singer Dave Coots. The band would take a break during the mid-90s before reconvening for 1996's Tiny Music Songs from the Vatican Gift Shop. The album would represent a star change in sound, showing more glam and psychedelic influences, and would win over some critics in the process, but Wyland's inability to stay sober resulted in the band only touring for a short period of time to support the album and they would lose out the opportunity to open for KISS, which other alternative rock band Alice in Chains filled in for. It was ironic that Alice in Chains was in the same boat, only playing a handful of shows the same year. STP would also end up canceling their own headlining dates as well. Guitarist Dean DeLeo would tell Rolling Stone in 1997, Scott called and said, I'm effing up, I need help. When I talked to him, I could hear his condition. He said, I'm going into treatment, and I said, I'd love to believe that. And then on Monday, he checked himself in, he'd say, by early 1997, Wyland's bandmates once again hooked up with singer Dave Coots, but formed the side project talk show, which I've done a whole video on. The link is down below. Wyland in the meantime would go on to release his first solo record, 12 Bar Blues, and Wyland would be arrested again in 1998 for possession, forcing him to cancel his tour dates for a solo record. And by 1999, Wyland was in trouble with the law again, and under California's three strikes law, that meant a mandatory prison sentence. He would be sentenced to 12 months in prison, but would only serve four. Around this time, he would tell Rolling Stone, I felt I was achieving something after I'd been there for a month and a half. They say that in order for sobriety to work, you have to surrender. It happened over a period of time, being locked down, dealing with the fear of the unknown, but once I surrendered and stopped trying to control everything, I started getting peace of mind, he'd say. The same year, the band would reassemble and put out their follow-up record number four, which gave the band the biggest single of their career with Sour Girl. The band would return in 2001, releasing their final album with Wyland for almost a decade with Shangri-La Dida. According to MTV, the album's sessions were tension-filled, as Wyland became addicted to pain medication. Tensions only boiled over when the band members hit the road, and at their last gig of the tour in 2002, it was reported that a fight broke out backstage between Wyland and guitarist Dean DeLeo. While the band wouldn't officially announce their breakup, it soon came out that Wyland had left the group, with some reports claiming he was fired. He would end up joining supergroup Velvet Revolver, who I've done a whole video on, the link is down below. Wyland would tell Howard Stern in 2004 how during the making of Velvet Revolver's first album, Contraband, the DeLeo brothers were in the studio next door, working on an Alien Ant Farm album, and they seemed to have made amends with each other. By 2007-2008, rumors were swirling about a possible Stone Temple Pilots reunion. According to Velvet Revolver's Duff McKagan, Wyland initially hid the reunion from his bandmates, creating tension within the group. Wyland was originally planning on splitting his time between both bands, but by the spring of 2008, he would be fired by Velvet Revolver. His substance abuse and erratic behavior was cited as the reasons behind his firing. The reunion came about after Wyland's wife Mary Forsberg placed a call to the DeLeo brothers that would set things in motion for an SCP reunion. Wyland would regroup with the band in late 2008, but things seemed tense from the beginning. Late concert starts and diva behavior from the frontman seemed to create tension in the group, according to radio broadcasters Opie and Anthony, who attended several of the band's gigs in 2008. Drama aside, the band ended up doing a 65-day tour across North America, and even managed to put out their first record in almost a decade, in 2010, with their self-titled record, which would debut on number two on the Billboard album charts. Two years later, in January of 2012, Velvet Revolver would reunite for a one-off performance as part of a benefit show. By the fall of that year, Wyland would start rumors that Velvet Revolver would be getting back together, and Wyland seemed open to fronting both bands. But by the fall of that year, there was a lot of talk about the 20th anniversary of STP's debut album, Core. There were rumors of a reissue and possible tour where the band would play the album in its entirety. 
None of those would come to fruition as the band would hit some rough times. Regardless, STP would tour that summer and fall, but they would play set lists mostly consisting of their greatest hits. One show in Canada exemplified the tension in the band as Wyland showed up late and the band cut their set short, angering many fans. It would be Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash who would give a radio interview in December of 2012 where he revealed that he had heard Scott Weiland had been fired from Stone Temple Pilots. I'm here in Minneapolis. The big news came out. Uh, Scott Weiland had said, Velvet Revolver's getting back together. And you said, quote, he's out of his mind. I know. He's come out and said it again. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to say. He says, now would be the perfect time for a reunion. Where is he getting all this? That's because he got fired from STP. That's why. Oh, he got fired from STP. I didn't know. No. See, all I've heard from him is that, or, well, uh, read from well, him. I think all things considered, <laughs> I mean, I, these things always catch me by surprise, too, because I only find out about it through the media. You know, and I'm on the sure. road, you know, in some other country, and, and I start hearing all this stuff, so I inquire within, and that's what I was told. Interesting. Okay, he just said that he was getting bored playing the greatest hits package of STP, so, huh. Something to dive into deeper there. Right on, dude. Um, In 2013, Stone Temple Pilots would announce Wyland's firing, and he would shoot back, releasing a statement that read, I learned of my supposed termination from Stone Temple Pilots this morning by reading about it in the press. Not sure how I can be terminated from a band I founded, fronted, and co-wrote many of its biggest hits, but that's something for the lawyers to figure out, he'd say. Apart from his erratic behavior, drug use, and tardiness, Wyland's bandmates contended they warned him not to go on a solo tour, or they would be repercussions. He ignored them and he would be playing mostly songs from STP's first two records and using the band's name to promote the track. And his ex-bandmates claimed that he tried to interfere with the success of their new single, Out of Time, which was recorded with new frontman at the time, Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park. The remaining members of Stone Temple Pilots would file a lawsuit against Wyland in an attempt to get the singer to stop singing the band's songs on tour or to even use the band's name to promote a solo tour. Wyland, meanwhile, would turn around and sue his former bandmates, claiming he co-founded the band and wrote most of their material. Bassist Robert DeLeo would tell Rolling Stone, It was a very difficult decision to terminate the face of your band. There are many paths to the history of certain bands, and each one is a little different, but it all kind of turns out the same at the end. But it was a very difficult decision to do that. That's as big as it gets, but we really didn't have any other choice, he'd say. The lawsuits would be settled out of court, with the DeLeo brothers and drummer Eric Kretz retaining rights to the name, and both parties could perform STP songs live. Wallen would never return to STP as the band would be fronted by Chester Bennington for several years, but he would leave the band on amicable terms in 2015 and return to Lincoln Park. Wallen would found the new group The Wildabouts and would die on tour in 2015 due to an accidental overdose. While former frontman Chester Bennington would pass away two years later in 2017, sadly taking his own life. Following Wyland and Bennington's deaths, the band would put out statements remembering both frontmen. Following Bennington's departure, SDP would be fronted by current frontman Jeff Goot. In 2017, the band would reissue Core on its 25th anniversary. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again on Rock and Ultra Stories. Take care.